San Bernardino, a very important investigation to us. We still have one of those killers' phones that we have not been able to open. And it's been over two months now. We're still working on it. Uh, this iPhone that was owned uh, by the uh, San Bernardino Department of Public Health, but was used by one of the terrorists, um, that they should have uh, access to that phone and that uh, Apple should disable the auto erase security feature on the phone. That's the case that they've made to the court. Uh, and the court issued their ruling, say that they uh, issued a ruling uh, indicating uh, its agreement. Showdown between Apple and the federal government. This about one of the phones obtained from the San Bernardino uh, terrorists, uh, Tim Cook, with Apple writing, we oppose this order, which has implications far beyond the legal case at hand. Continuing, the FBI may use different words to describe this tool, but make no mistake, building a version of iOS that bypasses security in this way would undeniably create a back door. And while the government may argue that its use would be limited to this case, there is no way to guarantee such control. So, so far, Apple is a no. We're back with the pen. Charles. Well, I'll give you a way to make it limited to this case. It's the obvious answer and solution, and the grandstanding that Apple is doing, I think, is deplorable. What you do is you go to Apple and say, look, you take this, uh, you take this one phone, you open it wherever you want, it's in secret lab, underwater off the, the uh, Pacific Isles, all we want is the information. If you like, you can incinerate the phone after all this is done, give us the information. This is a as if the FBI stumbles upon the address of book of a killer who could be a serial killer. It's got a lock on it. Apple has the key and says, we're not going to give it to you because you are asking that, that we give away our secrets. It is preposterous. And, you know, I do think in my more cynical moments, which is almost always these days, that, I mean, this, in fact, is a great advertisement for the security of Apple. It, the world now knows that for two months, the, uh, the, the, the most sophisticated investigative agency of the United States has been unable to get into a private iPhone. That's quite an advertisement. You win, Mr. Cook, give it up. And if he wants to sue me over that, go ahead and do it. I would try one, two, three, four. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, DOJ put out a statement. It is unfortunate that Apple continues to refuse to assist the department in obtaining access to the phone of one of the terrorists involved in a major terror attack on U.S. soil. The judge's order and our request in this case do not require Apple to redesign its products, to disable encryption, or to open content on the phone. In addition, the judge's order and our request were narrowly tailored to this particular phone. A.B. This is just, it's so outrageous, beyond the heinous crime, this person is dead, and the phone belonged to the county. Um, th this is not anything that the founders could have anticipated. There has to be a framework for this. I know they've done some case-by-case -case work with the government, but there needs to be a public debate about this. The Congress needs to force a, some kind of framework so that there are rules for the future. And as Charles said, it does not require building a new system that can be easily hacked by everybody else. All right, I know where you are on the national security thing, but play Judge Napolitano right now. What is the libertarian argument to say no to this? Yeah, look, I, I think there actually is uh, a, an argument here. And the argument is should the federal government be able to compel Apple to create a new product, in effect, which is the argument that Tim Cook is making. If Tim Cook were right about the substance of the argument, I think he would have a pretty good case. I think he's wrong about the substance of the argument. And the court order, as Charles suggests, does specify that this uh, software device will be coded by Apple with a unique identifier to this phone, own loading only and exec executing on this subject device. So it is specific. It's narrowly tailored. I think that's the argument they're going to make. And to AB's point, it is currently, according to the Communications Assistant Law Enforcement Act, was passed in the 1990s, it is currently a violation of federal law to build a telephone system that isn't accessible to law enforcement for wiretaps. Now, there's a privacy argument to be made there, to be had there, but the people who are making it now, the question is whether that applies to data companies. Do you treat data companies the same way you treat telecom companies? Charles, if the feds were asking Apple to, to create a mechanism where any cell phone could be hacked into, that there would be a backdoor, then that would be a real argument, and it would require, I think it would have to be rejected. It would have to be only case by case. But that is not what's happening in this case, and that's why the grandstanding that I think Apple is doing 
is really harmful. And I don't see a way in which they can prevail in this kind of argument.